So Emma, you we, so we now we're down to the third video. We talked about uh, well, how did you start with with um, with programming and software, and then we talked about like uh, you know how how is it to what does it mean to start as you know as junior mm -hmm. uh, out of you know you finish your study, you start with a company, all of that, and we know that you moved into front end mm -hmm. after starting with with the back end side. Now, I suppose you write in JavaScript. Right, yes. in JavaScript, yeah, mainly, mm -hmm. right? Uh, what kind of frameworks you you use? I guess you you use React. Yes, um, but I've used a bunch of different frameworks and libraries. So I started with Dojo. Don't recommend it. But I was also starting at a hard time um, in my career where I was trying to learn web development while working a full time job. Um, so I wasn't a huge fan of Dojo, and then I went into Angular one or Angular two, which the MVC paradigm totally like destroyed my brain. I still don't understand it fully. Um, from there, I, I think I went into Vue, which I loved. I loved Vue.js. So oh, uh, that's that's atypical because people start with React. Yeah. And then learn about so Vue. being a developer on a design team, you get a lot more. Um, freedom to choose your tech stacks, especially if you're just building like client side websites, there's no data fetching or anything. And I didn't know Vue, but I knew it was, you know, big hype. And I'm like, okay. So I watched Sarah Drasner's um, Vue course on front end masters and I loved it. And so I, I think it was like a couple hours and I watched it and then I was able to build a website in Vue. So it was all about Vue. And then when I, I got my job in Germany, they said, okay, well, we're using React. So forget everything you know about Vue. And uh, so yeah, I had to pick up React, which was quite overwhelming coming from Vue, which I feel like is a lot more user-friendly, easier mm. to learn, in my opinion. Um, That's but, what of, we often hear about Vue. Like, yeah, you know, it's very user-friendly. Um, the documentation's great, all of the online courses. Um, React, it, there's such a hype around it. Now that I've been programming in React for two years, I love it <laughs> to death. And um, I, I would go back to Vue, but I think React is a special place in my heart now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so you, you, you still, you could do that kind of move to yeah. to React, and yeah. you, you appreciate being there. Yeah, but I will say it is hard to to pick up a new framework or library for for a role. That's really difficult. Now you talked about framework, library, all of these kind of things. What what what's the difference? Oh my gosh, I oh I is this an interview? Are you interviewing me for yeah. a job? Um, no, I. <sighs> Uh, there are some that, did are, you get, ever get this kind of question in an interview? No. Okay. I think one is more opinionated about how you, the architecture of your application. So frameworks, I think, in general are a very opinion. So I think Angular would be considered a proper framework where um, essentially the architecture is predetermined. A library like React is, um, in my opinion, more lightweight, and it's not opinionated about how you structure your your um, application. Mm -hmm. that, so would be, that would be my answer. I don't know if I failed my interview. Um, <laughs> but... It's so funny because saying framework and library every time is politically correct, but it's also like a mouthful. And so <laughs> there are some people though who get very angry if you call React a framework. Oh yeah, and I, I try to be like very careful. It's with like that. we have bigger problems than whether yeah. or not we call React a framework. <laughs> but like Vue, is it a framework or, or a library? That's where I get like a bit maybe. I know. In, you know I, I would say a framework. Yeah, I think Whereas so. Whereas React is is a library. Yeah. I think so, but I'm also not an expert in the in the differences, so it could be totally does it wrong. Matter? Does it matter? No. No, it doesn't matter <laughs> much. Anyway, so you started, okay, React and Vue. Yeah. Do you just use React or do you use some kind of framework on top of it, like Gatsby Next, anything like that? I love Gatsby. I'm a huge fangirl. Um, I think because it was so user-friendly um, and because Jason Langsdorf was like their dev advocate for a long time and I just love him to death. We worked at IBM together, so I've known him for years and um, he, I remember we were in Budapest. I was at CraftConf. I was just an attendee at the time. Uh, CraftConf is, is a very good conference. It's right? amazing. There, yeah. It was actually my first tech conference, my first real tech conference that I had ever attended. And this was way before Twitter had ever happened. And I remember watching him speak there. We went out after we went um, and had a drink. And he was telling me about Gatsby. And I'm like, OK, like it sounds I don't understand any of the words you're saying. And then I forget how I started to learn it. But one day I just picked it up and I have I, w I could talk for hours about Gatsby. I love it. Yeah. Let's talk for hours about Gatsby then. Oh, okay, but don't test me on my knowledge because <laughs> I could be wrong. <laughs> so what what the first thing that you liked about Gatsby? Just how easy it was to set up a static site. I was very confused what a static site is. Um, 
And I'm not going to give you the definition because I'm going to mess it up and then everyone's going to yell at me. Anymore. Okay. We'll stop um, the definition. But I just loved the fact that I could write a React application. It would be so fast like to, to link between pages and to load all these images and to have the ability to blur up um, images that weren't loaded. So if you have a lot of like images in a gallery, it's a lot nicer experience than you know having to worry about image performance myself and minification and all that stuff. Um, the ecosystem is incredible. The fact that it's open source and people can create their own plugins um, was wonderful. The ability to write Markdown and and have that you know transpile into like a React app. So I was able to write React and then um, it just transpiles down into like HTML and CSS and JavaScript, which you can host on GitHub for free, which I think is amazing. Um, but it rehydrates back into React app. So it's it's really very robust technology. Although to be fair, I haven't really worked with Next.js or anything. I haven't tried anything else. Mm -hmm. um, I just find the, the user experience really nice. Yeah, what I, f I feel, what I like about Gatsby is the fact you you start, you know, simple. Mm -hmm. And whenever like you need something, you you, you can get, get yeah. to do it very easily. Like you talked about blurring the images and mm -hmm. it could be about, you know, optimizing links. And right. there are so many things that it's, it's out of the box. You can mm -hmm. do so many things. But you don't have to do everything, right. you know, upfront. You, you kind of keep enhancing your website, mm -hmm. and um, you know, uh, you can do it with plugins and with other things right. that you attach to your project. And that's yeah. what's, what's it was a nice like. Um, like middle ground between a fully fledged React app for like I wanted to build myself a portfolio. Um, I didn't need a fully fledged React application necessarily, but I didn't want to use like. Uh, like a CMS either. Like I wanted something in the middle and I felt like that gave me everything I needed. Yeah, it feels like it's taken a lot of place of what WordPress used to be, mm, you know? Yes. And uh, it's taken that space where you, know, you start easy, add things on top of it and you know, yeah. you keep going. Yeah, absolutely. So, and so do you think that, I mean, for, to you, uh, did you start React with Gatsby or did you start like No, uh, before. I think I learned React for about a year before I picked up Gatsby. Okay, so what are the differences uh, between doing React um, alone mm -hmm. or doing it with Gatsby? It's pretty similar. I think the ability to have like a pages directory where every every like, JavaScript file in there gets turned into a proper page with a route is really nice. So I don't have to worry about um, setting up routes. Um, any JavaScript file in that folder will just automatically get you know created. Um, I would say it's very similar. Uh, the ability to have GraphQL integrated from from you know your website's conception is really really nice. I always wanted to learn GraphQL, but I never understood how to use it or why I would use it. And having it built in um, and learning how to like query your images uh, and you know populating them in your UI was really it was a good way to get started with GraphQL as well. Yeah, and and they uh, that's they took a very bold opinion there mm -hmm. and they integrated GraphQL. They even had this process to take any API mm -hmm. and convert it into GraphQL. And that's yeah. what I guess part of the success of uh, um, Gatsby is is that, is converting Absolutely. every any single API yeah. to GraphQL. So, you know. I think was, that paid off for them. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, and now, so so no routing, you have, you, you, know, you can use just the directory and, mm -hmm. you know, things. Uh, so it's more opinionated than React, right? You, yes. you find the answers right away. You don't have to figure out a way It yourself. takes away some of the, um, the decisions that you would have to make um, in regards to like, I don't have to worry about SEO or performance as much because they've already taken care of those things for me. So I think it's great for junior developers wanting to learn um, how to build a great React app mm -hmm. um, that is uh, static, right? So um, I wouldn't use this necessarily for real-time data. Like I wouldn't build like a real-time sports application with it. Um, you probably could, but that's not its primary use case. So if you're just a junior dev looking to build a portfolio or a blog, this is such a great intermediate intermediary step um, between like a fully fledged React app and like just plain HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And now, like, did you because you know then we talk about well, what's what's particular about Gatsby that it will build all the pages on mm -hmm. some kind of event it will grab all the content and rebuild all the pages. Mm -hmm. um, some people will argue that it will take uh, you know time to build all the pages if you have a big website. Did you mm -hmm. suffer from that? Did you I haven't run into that um, but I also am not building like massively scaled websites. So right. yeah. So it wasn't uh, something that bothered you in, in your in no. your work. yeah. No. Um, so now that um, do you, do you still do Gatsby? Mm -hmm, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm building a design system at work, and um, our style guide, so our our website is is built with Gatsby. 
Nice. Um, now, if you if there are like if you're someone is going into learning Gatsby now, mm -hmm. are are there some kind of advice, or like tips on um, you know things that should you should avoid or that will help you learn Gatsby much mm -hmm. quicker? I would I, say it's already their documentation is really their docs very are really good. great. That's where I first learned about it. Um, Jason Lingsdorf has a front end masters course. It's like an intro to Gatsby. I would highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. I think front end masters has quality courses in general, but um, that one specifically is is wonderful. And he also does a learn with Jason show that I can't recommend enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you're ever stuck, just reach out to him or reach out to um, Chris or someone from the team. Um, they will spend their time to help you fix your problems. Right, and then you. Uh, what, what did you use with uh, together with Gatsby for for styles? I just stick with either SAS or um, CSS. But um, yeah, I guess when I'm building Gatsby projects, those are the two I would stick with. Um, although you know, I've worked with React Emotion and and styled components and all of those things, which are are fun. Um, but I don't use them on my day to day job. Do you have any opinion about style components? I think they're great for like scoping styles. That's one downfall of SAS is that you can't like superficially you can scope styles, but there's nothing actually preventing you from scope creep or like styles creeping out of their scope. Um, so I think they're really great in that aspect. But I don't know how I feel about CSS and JS. Uh, but I also love CSS, so it's it's I don't know. It's mm -hmm. a weird paradigm for me to. And CSS is evolving very quickly. So, yeah, you know, yeah. each time there's something that you say, oh, I need a framework for that. And then CSS gets a new right, like variables. Like, okay, nice. yeah. yeah, variables, and yeah. They, they're way better than than size variables. Yeah, that's like a nice thing about it. They're dynamic, you can animate yeah. them. They're really interesting. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So maybe let's in the next video dig more deeper. You talked about design systems. Mm -hmm. You'd like to kind of get more into details about this topic. Sure. Cool. Yeah.